I've been saving one of my favorite tricks until now, and it's to do with weighted averages. I call it the middle number trick, and it really is one of my favorites. When students see it, they're often overwhelmed and joyous and thankful, and they say, Philip, how can you have not told me this before? It's amazing. I actually learned it from a student. I used to teach things the algebraic way, then I learned this method and I think it is far better and I've been teaching it now for years. If you find this trick helpful, please do leave a like and leave a comment and do watch to the end because there are multiple facets to this weighted average or middle number trick. This entire trick relies upon you spotting a middle number between two other numbers. Or to put it in fancier words, spotting a weighted average between two other terms. That is the key thing you need to notice to use this trick. Here is a classic question, and we'll discuss why this is a middle number or weighted average trick. And then I'm gonna show you the trick and you are gonna be gobsmacked. A portrait museum has a collection made up of only paintings and sketches. 30% of the paintings are on display, while 15% of the sketches are on display. If 26% of the museum's collection is on display, what is the ratio in the collection of paintings to sketches? Can you spot that middle number? Yes, the weighted average is the 26%. Okay, so we've got 30% of paintings on display on one side, 15% of sketches on display on the other side, and an overall weighted average of 26% of the collection in total on display. So this is the perfect question to use the following trick. And it starts with a number line, where we simply draw out the number on the left, the number on the right, and the middle number on a number line. At this point, you might say to me, oh, I have an algebraic method, and I know that method, and I used to teach that way, but I think this way is superior. Others of you would say, oh, well, I can kind of tell there must be more paintings because that's the thing that the weighted average, the middle number is closest to. And you're right, but this method is gonna give us an accurate ratio between paintings and sketches. What's the first step in the trick? You find the distance between the number on the left and the middle number, and also the middle number and the number on the right and you write those two distances on top on the number line. This would be four on the right. You don't have to write 4%, just four is fine. And 11 on the left. Those are the two distances. The distance between 15 and 26 is 11, and between 26 and 30 is four. Now here is the first key moment. We have to flip those distances across to the other side. And let me try to give you a little hint why we do this. You don't actually need to know why we do it, but I thought I'd just give you a sense of why we do it, just for your satisfaction. The smaller distance on the right indicates that there's more of the 30%, because the average is skewed towards 30%. So it wouldn't make sense that that smaller distance stays on the right, because the bigger ratio should be on the right. The 30% is way more common than the 15%. In fact, it's inversely proportional. The smaller that distance on the right, the more of the 30% we have. And that's why that bigger distance, which is on the left, really belongs on the right. The 11, which is a huge distance, indicates that we have a much smaller amount of 15%. It's inversely proportional. And the inversely means it belongs on the other side on the right hand side. So the four, the small distance, travels to the left. The 11, the big distance, travels to the right. And now we have a ratio that makes sense. The much bigger number belongs with 30% because the average is much closer to 30%. In summary, we now have a ratio between the amount of sketches, that's four, to the amount of paintings, that's 11. There are far more paintings than there are sketches. Therefore, notice the question is the ratio of paintings to sketches. So that's 11 to 4. 
not 4 to 11. That would be the ratio of sketches to paintings. The left hand side, the 15% is sketches, the right hand side, the 30% is paintings. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's great for ratio questions, but what happens if they want a fraction, for example? Time for my next amazing example. If you want, you can pause the video and try this one yourself. The trick is so effective that you might be able to do it just with that first example only. Here we go. A theater sells only matinee tickets and evening tickets. The matinee tickets are priced at $5 and the evening tickets are priced at $9. If the theatre sold 120 tickets for an average price of $7.50, how many of those tickets were evening tickets? Can you spot the middle number? We have matinee at $5, evening at $9, and an average price of $7.50 in the middle. So we set up our number line. As before, we find the distance on the left and the distance on the right. I didn't need the dollar sign but it's essentially 1.5 on the right is the distance between $7.50 and $9, and 2.5 is the distance on the left. What do we do? We flip those distances. So the 1.5 goes to the left, and the 2.5 goes to the right. Just quickly, we don't like ratios being decimals, so multiply by two to get rid of the decimals. The ratio of 1.5 to 2.5 becomes three to five. But essentially, we have a ratio, we don't have a fraction. As I've written down below, to solve that, we add the ratio to find a total. Three plus five is eight. This then becomes the denominator. That three and five now become three over eight and five over eight. In other words, three eighths of the tickets were matinee, five eighths of the tickets were evening. Boom, we've just converted a ratio into a fraction. How do we do it? Do you remember, we added up the ratio three plus five to get eight, and then we made that the denominator of both sides. So it's three over eight and five over eight, three eighths and five eighths. Finally, we can answer the question. If the theater sold 120 tickets and they want to know how many of those tickets were evening tickets, well, the evening tickets were 5 eighths of the total. So we do 5 eighths of 120, which is 75. How did I work that out? You do 120 divided by eight, which you can use long division, and that's 15 times five, 75. So 75 of the tickets were evening, leaving, I think, 45 tickets for matinee. But again, we use this incredible middle number trick swapping the distances, creating a ratio, and then finishing it off by adding the ratio to convert the ratio into a fraction. Incredible trick, one of my favorites. We're gonna finish off with two more examples. The first one is what to do if they ask for a percentage, and the second one is a harder one, where you have to focus on the middle number even harder because there will be multiple variables. Both of these topics could easily come up in the GRE and the GMAT. If you want to, pause the video and try yourself. Otherwise, I'm gonna go through it. The staff at a charity are either volunteers or employees. The staff at the charity work on average 20 hours a week. If volunteers work for 10 hours a week and employees work four times as many hours as volunteers, what percentage of the staff are volunteers? Can you spot the middle number? This time they haven't explicitly given us two numbers and a middle number, but we can quickly work one out. Volunteers work for 10 hours, employees work four times as many hours, that's 40 hours. And they say, on average, the staff works for 20 hours a week. So 20 is the middle number between 10 and 40. Bob's your uncle, we create the diagram again. On the left, we can label it as volunteers, and on the right, we can label that as employees. Find the distances, that's 20 and 10 flip those distances and we get the ratio of 20 to 10 on the left to right. The left hand side being volunteers and the right hand side being employees. Simplifying that ratio, we get two to one. To convert this to a percentage, we do the same thing we did with the fractions. We convert the ratio into a fraction. That's a great first step. So two plus one is three, 
So the ratio becomes two thirds to one third. Now we would have likely earlier labeled the left hand side as volunteers and the right hand side as employees. So the question is asking about the percentage of staff that are volunteers. That's on the left, that's the two thirds. At this point, we simply convert the fraction into a percentage by long dividing. You also might know off by heart that two thirds is 66.6%. .6%. That's a good one to memorize. Just like one third is 33.3% .3 recurring, two thirds is 66.6% .6 recurring. So 66.6% .6 of the staff are volunteers. Time for a final example, and this one is much harder. Focus on the average. What makes this one harder, as you'll see, is that we're given a middle number, but it's not so simple. You can try to do this one yourself, or otherwise I will walk you through it. Glass A is 30% water and 70% lemonade. Glass B is 50% cola and 50% lemonade. If the two glasses are poured into a container, and the resulting 500 milliliter mixture is 65% lemonade, how many milliliters of the mixture is cola? First challenge with this harder question. You need to spot the middle number, but this time you're maybe distracted by all the different numbers that are out there. We've got water, lemonade, cola. Which one, which ingredient, did they give you a middle number for? They gave us an average, a weighted average of lemonade, 65% lemonade. When they were mixed together, the average was 65% lemonade. Didn't use that word average, but it gave us the resulting proportion that was lemonade. Therefore, draw the number line only for lemonade. Don't worry about water. Don't worry about cola for now. This time we're gonna label it properly. Glass A, being 70% lemonade, glass B being 50% lemonade, and the resulting mixture being 65% lemonade. So that's the first challenge overcome. We focus only on the ingredient for which they gave us an average. Most of the rest of the question is as you've seen it before. We find the distance on the right and on the left, flip it, create a ratio, simplify the ratio, Add the ratio up, three plus one is four, and create two fractions, three quarters and one quarter. So we can say of that mixture, three quarters was from glass A and one quarter was from glass B. But then they try to mess with our heads because they say how many milliliters of the mixture is cola? But cola only came up in glass B. And this is the second reason why this question is more challenging. How do we find the number of milliliters of the mixture that is cola when glass B was the only one that had cola in it? First, let's think only in fractions. As we can see here on the right, one quarter of the mixture is glass B. So of that 500 milliliters, we know one quarter of it is glass B. And 50% of glass B is cola. Thinking of that as a fraction, that's a half. Half of glass B is cola. So either you could work out the amounts one after another, as in you could work out a quarter of 500 milliliters, and that's 125 milliliters is glass B, and then find half of that, which is cola. Or we can simply multiply the fractions. B is a quarter of the mixture, and B is a half cola. A quarter times a half is an eighth. So one eighth of the overall mixture is cola. That's what I prefer to do, because imagine they asked us for an overall fraction that is cola, rather than an actual amount of milliliters. This would be the preferable method. You multiply the fraction of the total that's glass B with the fraction of glass B that is cola because cola only appears in glass B. A quarter times a half is an eighth. As this time they did ask us for an actual amount, all we have to do is find one eighth of 500 milliliters, which is 500 milliliters divided by eight. You can use long division for that, 
and I believe that would be 62.5. So that has demonstrated that even in the hardest of circumstances, if you can spot the middle number and follow the trick carefully, which works due to the inverse proportionality of the distances to the ratio, we can solve these questions in 30 seconds or less with not a single moment of algebra. I hope you, like me, love this trick. It's one of my favorites I've been teaching for many years now. If you do like it as much as I do, please do leave a comment. Or if any of the examples were a little confusing, do watch them again. Thank you again for watching. See you in the next video.